In just a few seconds, everyone's mind was all over the place. They all thought that these Baymardians had come for William's head. For them, they believed that there was no way in hell that Landon knew about William. Even their masters had taken some time to meet William. So what more of these people who were all the way over in Baymard? Yup. In their eyes, William was already dead meat. Warrant Officer Basil looked around for any sudden attacks before walking towards one of the vehicles and opening up its door. Shree. Bam. The door was shut. And like the true final boss that he was, Landon calmly got out of the vehicle and slowly walked towards his men. He stood in front of them like a mother hen protecting her chicks and looked at Eli and Connor with a gentle smile on his face. Brothers, it's been long, hasn't it? Silence. The entire place fell into deep silence for a minute as everyone was waiting for Landon to speak more on this sudden visit of his. Little brother, it really has been long, hasn't it? So, what brings little brother here? Eli asked curiously. Oh, elder brother, over the past few weeks, I've really been missing out on being one with nature. So I decided to take a stroll with some of my men along these parts. But who would have known that we would end up here instead? Ah, brothers, I feel so blessed now that you are here. Who would have thought that a simple stroll would lead me right to you all? Sigh. In the future, maybe I should take more strolls very often. That way, I can see you all very often. Landon said while resting his hands on his chin and nodding his head, as if agreeing with what he had just said. Tisi. The enemy warriors couldn't help but feel that Landon was somewhat shameless. What bloody stroll? Did he think that they were five-year-old children? This was a secret base, all right? So how could one just stroll in without any prior knowledge of the place? Heck, even their masters needed time to find this location? So how was it easy for anyone to just stroll into the place? And how come this stroll of his ended up in a completely different region within Arcadena? Please, a stroll is what one took within the same town or even city. But these people had traveled through different cities, towns, and villages. In short, they had left their empire and stepped into Arcadena's territories. And they dared to look at them in the face and say that their sudden appearance here was because they were taking a stroll? Come on, bro. Who do you think that you're deceiving? All enemy warriors looked at him and couldn't help but turn cold. For them, they felt like Landon was belittling them as well as their leader. So how could they not be mad? As for William, he tried his best to reel in his laughter while listening to the conversation between Landon and the princes. As expected, this cousin of his was truly something else. Only he had the talent of making his enemies both speechless and angry at the same time. William looked at Landon's group of men and couldn't help but worry a bit. Even though they had probably arrived in order to rescue him, weren't they too few to fight? Sure, William had taken out a good chunk of both Eli and Connor's men, but there were still hundreds of enemy warriors around. So how were they supposed to deal with the current situation? His body tensed up a bit when he thought about it a little bit more. But soon, he quickly calmed his nerve and relaxed his muscles. That's right. For Landon to come meant that he could definitely handle the situation at hand. So did that mean that had something up his sleeve? William sat very still and observed Landon curiously. How was he going to handle the matter? Him. I didn't know that my little brother liked taking strolls this much. In fact, your strolling skills might even become legendary in the future. After all, you're the first person in the history of Pino to take a stroll that made you end up in an entirely different empire altogether. Brother, you're truly great. Thank you, older brother Eli. I too think that I'm great as well. So there's no need to compliment me so much since it's a fact. Truly shameless. Those were the words that everyone described Landon as. Enough. Since you strolled into this secret base, then you must have also come for you on personal interest, correct? Yup. Elder brother Connor is indeed smart. Landon had indeed come here for personal interests, but rather than money or property, he had come here due to the system's mission. He too was shocked a few hours back, when he realized that it was William that he was saving. Connor looked at Landon coldly. Look here, little brother. I don't like beating around the bush as brother Eli does. So I'll ask you just once. Why are you here? Speak up. And don't F asterisk asterisk kin lie to us. Ah, 
elder brother Connor, how can you even think that I would lie to you? Do I look like a liar to you? Don't worry, I'll be truthful. But if you want me to tell you about the reason for my sudden appearance, then you both have to tell me you as well. Oomph. We are just here to detain cousin. He had done a lot of terrible things around Arcadina. So we came here to subdue him. Everyone listened to Connor lie right through his teeth and smiled wryly. It seems like these princes all had special traits. One was shameless, and the other was a good liar instead. Landon looked at his brothers and smiled. Hmm. Brothers, since you all were so honest with me, then I'll also be completely honest as well. You might not believe me, but I'm here to pick up a good brother of mine. You see, I'm the to rescue cousin. Sling. Swords were drawn immediately, as everyone didn't expect that the situation would be completely different from what they had assumed. How could they let the person who was responsible for killing some of their comrades off the hook just like that? Eli quickly looked around and knew that his men, combined with Connor's men, were enough to tackle Landon's men. So was there to be afraid of? All he and his men had to do was step a little further from these Baymardians, and all would be safe for them. One had to know that Eli believed that the black things in their hands were capable of shocking them only at a certain distance. Yup. He thought that they were holding tasers in their hands. So after analyzing everything, he felt even more confident than ever about the current situation. Save him? Little brother, since when did you get wrapped up with this common criminal? If you choose to interfere with today's matter, then you leave us no choice but to let you suffer the same fate as that of a criminal. Since you're obstructing our jobs and bringing justice into Arcadina, Eli said, while lazily looking at Landon. But even though his face looked expressions, his heart was turbulent as the seas on a stormy night. His heart rate accelerated a bit as he waited for Landon to fall deep into his pit. Every second of silence seemed like a century to him, as all he needed now was for Landon to join in with William, making it easier for him to kill him openly. Because if he didn't do it like that, Connor here might take advantage of the whole situation so as to drag him down even further. If he killed Landon just like that, then Connor might snitch to the Baymardians about the whole incident. At that time, even if Alec had conquered Baymard, maybe some of the people there would see Connor as a good guy. And who knows? Maybe there would be many revolts and whatnot happening within the Baymardian Empire. So even though he could always use force at times, it was better to avoid such unnecessary situations. And that was why he had to come up with a legit reason to kill Landon. After all, the man was AF asterisk asterisk kin king. So he could just touch him just because he wanted to. Silence. Everyone looked at Landon impatiently while pointing their swords and spears at him and his crew. Landon looked at Eli and sneered. Big brothers, if that's the case, then so be it. But all I know is that I will rescue cousin no matter what. Good, 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 good. You're really a fool. Even after we brothers have tried to advise you, you still decided to take that route? Then don't blame us for showing you no mercy. Cut the crap. You all talk too much. Are we doing this or not? Little brother, since you insist, then I won't try to convince you any longer. Men, release the arrows. Connor yelled. But your highness, some of our men are standing next to them. So if we release a rain of arrows, would they die together with these Baymardians? One of the low-class archers said, before getting a solid slap from those beside him. Pa, this is war fool. Death is normal. After all, even if they don't die now, we will still perish one day. So what difference does it make if one dies today or tomorrow? Always remember, something must kill a man, so why bother? Release the arrows. Eli also commanded. And just like that, a rain of arrows was sent towards Landon, his men and some of the enemy warriors beside him. Of course, Landon and his crew estimated that this would be the enemy's first move, so they already came up with a game plan prior to this. Now. Thup. 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 The Baymardian soldiers quickly dropped to the group and used their legs to down enemy opponents next to them before using them as shields over their bodies. Of course, some of the soldiers quickly rushed over to protect William as well. Ah! The enemy warriors screamed in agony, and their bodies trembled as if something was about to burst out from within. F asterisk CK. It was painful as hell. 
the arrow's pierces had pierced right through their bodies, leaving them in an extremely sorry state. As shields, the rain of arrows had soared no part of their bodies, and had directly plunged into their eyeballs, necks, and even their privates. It was truly a gruesome sight to behold. Blue. Blood gushed out from their mouths like an overflowing bathtub, and no matter how much they struggled to stay away, many of them slowly lose consciousness, and even cry during the process, because they knew the death was definitely knocking on their doorstep right now. To make matters worse, their death was accelerated even further by the many incoming arrows that were sent to them non-stop. Their bodies had been vibrating non-stop till the moment they took the last breath. So many of them died feeling very resentful. Couldn't you have given even a moment's peace? Princes, hmph, who cares about you all? Shoot, 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 thup, thup. The enemies were quickly shooting their arrows like crazy people, but all of a sudden they saw the doors of the vehicles open up. Yes, some of the soldiers were still within the vehicles. All units take aim just as planned. Hearing the instructions from their walkie-talkies, they quickly utilized the hand-firing missile guns and swiftly aimed at their targets. Fire. Boom. Ah. Silence. Several thick clouds of flame rose into the air like magic, accompanied by the ghastly screams of men. Ah. Everyone paused for a moment, and their faces soon turned frighteningly pale. The screams alone made them feel as if they were the ones who were currently suffering right now. Damn it. What the hell was that? Boom. Ah. Oh. Help me. My legs. My arms. F asterisk CK. It hurts so bad. The loud screams and cries of the injured made many of the enemy warriors get distracted so much that they took their eyes off Landon and his crew. But who could blame them? They had to properly understand the situation at hand so as to protect themselves as well. Their hearts felt like a ticking time bomb that would blow up any moment from now since they felt that the next attack could be coming their way any moment from now. So how could they still focus on Landon and his crew at this point? Some of them were so close to the explosions that the heat made them feel like they were in hell. Several body parts were sent flying their direction, as well as drizzles of blood too. In fact, they were so shaken that some of them even peed themselves on the field while holding their swords and trembling. It was the fear of the unknown that made them petrified. Oh, my heavens. What do we do? Do you think that there's still black powder somewhere on the battlefield? Black powder? How can that be? Didn't we suffer enough previously from it? I thought that this ghostly prince person wouldn't have more tricks up his sleeve. But who would have thought that he still had more? How awful. How can someone make us lower our guards in such a manner? Wait. I didn't see anyone shot any arrows at us. So you all sure that it was black powder? What if it was sent from above? You mean the heavens? Please. You read too much Baymardian fictional books. Think about it. How can the ancestors in heaven bother over such trivial issues? Or do you think that this ghostly prince guy is some destined king or something? Yeah. You're right. That sounds ridiculous. How can a lost prince that grew outside the palace be any better than any of our masters? We were probably attacked with black powder right now. Oomph. This man really knew how to scheme. So even though they were about to torture him, he still had so many hidden tricks for them. No wonder he was willing to take the hard way. How despicable. Shameless. Of course, even though some of them didn't know how they got attacked. Some, on the other hand, had seen the doors of the vehicles open up just before the attacks. So they quickly knew who was the cause for the matter. Eli and Connor were also shocked as well. And so for a brief moment, the entire battlefield had plummeted down into chaos. Of course, while the soldiers in the vehicle continuously bombarded their enemies nonstop, Landon and the rest quickly threw away their human shields and sprung towards the enemies beside them. Everyone, take your positions just as planned. Team 1 and 2, get Prince William to safety. Team 3 and 4, cover for them. As for the rest of the teams, in and out of the vehicles, you know what to do. Landon said while speaking into his walkie-talkie, before finally storing it away and exchanging it for his guns instead. Now, it was time for him to dance. Landon took out his guns, 
rolled forward and quickly shot at the enemies that were now surrounding Eli and Connor. Since they were here, he might as well capture them too. After all, he had to put William on the throne sometime before the end of the year. So why not start weeding the grass for him now? Bang! Bang! Oh! Very quickly, the battlefield became overly heated up once more. The tension in the air was high, and everyone's emotions were all over the place. Bang! Young Warren Officer Festus quickly dashed towards all incoming enemy warriors fiercely. Three burly men were currently running with their swords towards him, and behind those three were another seven more. He looked at them and kept calm. All this for little old him? Well, his majesty did say that they would all have to tackle huge numbers, so he was expecting it. Bang! Bang! He shot two of the men on the necks, before dropping onto the ground and finally sliding between the middle one's leg. And as he slid underneath, he quickly shot the guy's legs and focused on the remaining seven. Son of A.B. asterisk T.C.H. Said the guy whose leg had just been shot. What kind of pain was this? It felt like it was drawing his soul out of his body with every passing second. His breathing became hoarse, and his mind became unfocused. Bloody hell. He had been pierced by an arrow before, and had even been stabbed by a sword. But never in his entire existence had he felt this side of pain before. Which sorcerer made such a weapon? Bang! Bang! All seven men had now closely surrounded Festus. And so, he quickly shot two two of them, before finally launching a high kick at the front man's chin. Ugh, you're gonna pay for that, yelled the man, who fiercely cut through the air with his sword. Swish! Festus dicked, and the sounds of the sword whistled in the air like an old flute. Of course, seeing that Festus had drilled to the floor, how could those around him let him go? They also came towards him like crazy, but all of it was to no avail. Festus quickly rolled onto the floor and shot some of them, before getting up, punching, kicking and shooting them some more again. He even managed to jump on some of them as if he were a monkey, and when others tried to attack him, he would jump off from his victim's chest, making the others accidentally injure their comrades instead. Die you motive stern sick here? Screw you. Why won't you die? F asterisk CK. You, you little imp. Bang. 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 Festus finished up with the group, and before he knew it, several other sacrificial lambs were coming his way. My, my, my. Gentlemen. It seems like you all are truly late for the party. But you know what they say. Better late than never. So, let's dance. Bang. Bang. Boom. Bang. Bang. Ah. On the battlefield, the sounds of several explosives and gunshots could be heard all over the place, accompanied by the shriveled cries and curses of several injured men as well. Many of the enemy warriors felt like their entire worldview was now shattered into pieces by these Baymardians. They felt like crying, but had no tears in their extremely dry eyes. They looked at the heavens and couldn't help but curse their ill fates. Damn it! If they had known, they wouldn't have come out for today's battle. Who would have known that they would be fighting these weird men from Baymart? Some of the men cried and scattered about chaotically while trying to avoid the attacks from the hand missiles. F asterisk CK. Didn't they say that if we keep our distances, then their weapons won't affect us at all? Who said that these Baymardians were easy to deal with? Come out now, so that I can hack you into pieces before I die. Come out for us. Didn't you say that you had been to Baymard before, and knew how their weapons work? So why did you make us feel like these Baymardians were weak chickens? Screw you. These people are simply demons, alright? Many of the men complained loudly while fleeing in all directions. As for the enemy captains and those in charge of leading the men to victory, they scrunched up their faces and loosing at the cowardly men under them in disgust. How dare you imps retreat? How stupid are you all? We are greater than two if we rush over there and block their carriages, then wouldn't we be able to win in the end? Men, take heart, stand firm, and run towards them victoriously. The enemy warriors who heard this almost puked out blood and died from anger. Screw you. What bloody battle. This is a massacre, alright? Yeah. Even if we wanted to charge forward, 
Do you know how many of us will die before we eventually get to the front of these carriages? Oomph. It's easy to talk when you're just sitting there and watching us die. As our group leader, if you want us to go forward victoriously, then why don't you lead us there rather than talking? Yeah. Stop directing us on what to do next and lead us. SK. Captain. I thought that you were our protector. But now, I can see that you were just our executioner instead. Go screw yourself. Many of the men felt like choking their leaders to death when they heard the encouraging words from their leaders. As for their so-called leaders, they in turn had their faces all turn red from anger as well. How dare these insects talk back at them? These people who had previously looked up to them in awe and fear were now looking at them with eyes that were filled with disgust and hatred instead. Even the weakest ones who used to pray and wish to be their stable boys now looked at them in complete rage. The leaders all felt like stabbing these good-for-nothings to death. Ungrateful insects. If you all don't march forward, then you will leave us with no choice but to come for your families instead. Because whether we win the battle or escape, once we get back to our camp, those who previously failed to obey orders will get killed on the spot. Also, their families will be hunted and put to death as well. So it's either you die here on the battlefield like a war hero, or you all become traitors and get killed along with your families later on. But don't forget that if we do win this battle, then you and your families will also survive in the end. And you all will be forgiven for your cowardly attitudes too. It would be like none of you had yelled back to your leaders. So choose wisely. When the enemy warriors heard this, they quickly quieted down and decided to continue battling forward. After all, at this point, what choice did they have? All they could do now was pray that they won the battle in the end. Boom. Bang. Bang. Ah. As the battle commenced, Landon and a few other soldiers fighting beside him slowly advanced onward as well. Cover me, boys, Landon said before placing his gun back into his gun belt and running forward. And who were his targets? Of course, they were Eli and Connor. After all, he had to take these two back alive. But how could Eli and Connor not notice him? In truth, their eyes had truly never left Landon ever since the battle began. They had to see what mischief this brother of theirs was up to. It was an understatement if they said that they weren't impressed by the weapons that these Baymardians used. If they had them, then wouldn't they have already sat on the throne ages ago? The more they saw, the mode they wanted to possess Baymard as their own. Their eyes became sharp with a hint of greed in it, as they looked at the destruction before them. Everything made them feel anxious and excited at the same time. Such weapons really put their arrows and swords to shame. And the more they saw, the more they realized that they didn't know a lot about Baymart. For a moment, they even began to worry that maybe Alec wouldn't win the battle at all. But of course, this thought only lingered for a moment. Because when they thought about how many men and resources Alec had in Arcadina, they soon found it hard to believe that Landon would win in the end. As for the current battle at hand, they were not too worried, because for them, if they captured or killed Landon, then the battle would automatically come to an end. First off, they didn't believe that Landon was stronger than them since they had been training non-stop right from the age of seven. And so the mere fact that they were both talented and older than Landon meant that they had enough experience and strength that exceeding his. So seeing Landon run forward, they immediately pulled out their swords and ran towards him as well. In their eyes, he was already a dead man. Eli and Connor sneered at Landon, as they felt that it was impossible for him to defeat any of them. Talk less of both of them at the same time. For sure, he was already a dead man walking. They gripped their swords firmly and looked at the incoming Landon coldly. And in a flash, their brotherly battle had begun. Landon ran up to his brothers, ducked to the left and punched Connor's side belly, before swiftly dropping to the ground and kicking Eli's shin fiercely too. Ugh high. Both brothers were shocked at the fact that they were pushed back and couldn't help but look at this brother of theirs in a new light. Wait, was he dancing? Yup. Landon was currently mimicking Eddie from Street Fighters. Pa. Ugh high. Damn it. What were these moves? It looks like they really underestimated this brother of theirs. Eli and Connor took deep breaths and calmed themselves. Getting agitated would only make them lose even more. So with that in mind, they no longer rushed up to Landon again hastily. Rather, 
they slowly walked around him for a bit, before finally stopping. Eli was at Landon's front, while Connor was at his back instead. Landon's smile broadened when he saw their little act. To him, it made no difference at all, because at the end of the day, they would still be his prisoners. Both brothers nodded at one another and calmly ran towards Landon who was still at the center. Eli sent a fierce swing towards Landon's head from the left to the right, while Connor sent another fierce swing targeting Landon's lower waist, from the right to the left instead. So both of their sword swings were going in the opposite direction. Swish! Their swords whistled in the air, and their eyes opened wide in shock. Everything happened like a slow-motion movie to them, because as their swords moved, their eyes had also focused on Landon as well. So they had seen everything with their own naked eyes. How could their brother be so flexible? Landon had started by bending his legs as if he wanted to limbo under a stick, and this move alone dodged Eli's swing that was coming for his head. From there, he quickly placed his lands on the floor with his belly facing upward and raised his legs into the air, immediately missing Connor's swing that was targeting his lower waist. With his legs in the air, he swiftly moved his hands on the ground to create his famous tornado kick that looked like Eddie's hip-hop dance move instead. Pa, 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 pa. Everything happened so fast that Eli and Connor didn't even have the time to counterattack. Because right after they made their lives, the next thing they knew, they were receiving multiple slaps from Landon's iron legs. F asterisk CK. They glared at Landon and charged forward again. It was obvious to say that they had rushed forward to receive more beatings from this little brother of theirs. What move did Landon not do on them? He lifted Connor in the air and did a body slam, and also carried out a Russian leg sweep on Eli as well. He had done so many moves on them that their faces had now turned purple from extreme rage. In fact, he had treated this little match with his brothers as an opportunity to test out all if the wrestling lives in his head. Bam! Crack! Swish! Ah! You're choking me! Let go! You bastard! How dare you! Bam! 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 At first, these brothers resisted him with all their might. But later, they found that they really couldn't win against him at all. What the hell was going on? They couldn't understand how this brother of theirs had suddenly grown to be so powerful. They even began to wonder if he had been possessed by some strong demon instead. Because how else could they explain the fact that while they had gotten beaten to the point of no return, this bastard brother of theirs hadn't even had a scratch on his body instead? It was truly unfathomable to them. One should know that they were seen as heaven's pride nobles, all beachside of their skills. Their sword skills were legendary, and they had even surpassed many of their sword masters instead. So how could someone as defenseless as him win them? If word got out, then how were they supposed to live with themselves? Their reputations would be completely ruined, while Landon, on the other hand, would undoubtedly soar into greater heights instead. But even if they knew all of this, what could they do about it? They had been struggling to get any advantage over Landon since the battle begun. But who would have known that they would still be at a disadvantage against the bastard? Their hearts burned with hit rage, that Inky wanted to seek harm to the culprit before it. Their rage began destroying them from the inside, as all they wanted to do now was cut the mother of asterisk sea care into pieces and feed it to their bed hangles. Ah! Swish! Pa! They swung their swords at Landon and took more beatings from him again. At this point, it was almost pitiable, because they had blue eyes and purplish bruises all over their bodies. Of course, while the trio fought it out, their aides and some of their right-hand men and squad leaders were also fighting it out as well. Eli's body trembled as he tried to hold onto the sword in his hand. His entire right hand felt numb from the pain, and the weird in his hand was slowly slipping down. No, if he couldn't win this battle, then he had to escape. He looked around anxiously, before finally seeing one of his chief knights, Zarius making his way towards him. Zarius, quick! Create a distraction for me. Eh, Zarius, why are you pointing your sword at me? Your Highness, please kneel. I know you aren't stupid, so please connect the dots yourself. Your Highness, please kneel. I know you aren't stupid, so connect the dots yourself. Eli's eyes bulged out widely and his mind went blank for a moment. Typically, 
He knew how to control his expressions very well. But this particular incident had him shook. His mouth opened up slightly, and he looked at Zarius in shock. Why? Why did he betray him? Wasn't he good to Zarius all these years? Even though Zarius wasn't one of his aides, he was still one of his closest knights who had always been by his side. In fact, one would day that Zarius was like his personal secretary. But even at that, because Zarius' status wasn't as high as those of his aides, not all information could be passed on to Zarius, at least not until the moment they were setting out for war or anything else. Because when he discussed with his aides, they usually agreed to keep things away from everyone else, even their best friends and families. So as protocol, Eli typically didn't tell Zarius any of his plans until it was time for him to take action. All he could do was tell Zarius to prepare the men for an upcoming mission. But that was it. Of course, Eli didn't mind sharing or showing Zarius some letters or important info. But whenever Zarius asked him what were his next steps, he would always stay silent and tell Zarius to prepare the men instead. He never specified anything or even gave any specific date for when they would move out. The men just knew that they had to be prepared and could move out any time that their leader commanded it. After all, they got paid to train in battle, so they had no right to question their leader's commands. Zarius was usually the person who personally gave messages to Eli, and after reading it, Eli would give third massages to Zarius to read as well. But whatever Eli decided to do about the issue, Zarius had never known until the time to move out. Again, one should know that Eli received several good and bad messages several times in one month. And all the time, Eli would just tell him to prepare the men. So it was generally hard for anyone to guess what they were preparing the men for. Was it to go to the capital and make plans against Alec, raid over places, and take in more men? Or even deal with Slytherin Cord's mess? In fact, Eli had also had some matters out of Arcadena that directly involved him. So he was always on the move, and none of the men knew when or what battle they would be fighting next. At least not until the day they were setting out. In short, as protocol, Eli had always kept his next plan silent. Looking at Zarius now, he immediately understood why any leader should keep their mouth shut even with their most loyal men. Because one never knew when these people might turn against them. If he had been sharing everything with Zarius, then wouldn't he have died ages ago? Ha ha ha. I, the great Eli Barn, have truly been blind. Zarius, do you know what you are doing? Eli said coldly. Hit aides who were currently battling in the side were also shocked as well. Their bodies trembled, and their mind went all over the place when they thought of the bastard's betrayal. After everything that their master had done to promote the bastard's position, how dare he pay Eli back with betrayal? Damn it. They wanted to quickly run over and tear the son of A.B. asterisk asterisk kitchen into pieces. But how could they, when these Baymardians were constantly holding them back? Bastard. Get away from his highness. How dare you? Remove that blade from his highness's throat now. The aides and all the rest of Eli's men who were currently fighting beside them bellowed out angrily at what they had just witnessed. But Eli's men weren't the only ones who were in rage as well. Connor currently had a blade pointed to his neck as well, by none other than Nicodemus, who was one of his most trusted aides too. He gritted his teeth and glared at the traitor in rage all the while imaging how he would steam the traitor's body when he finally escaped from here. Yes, he still thought that he could escape. Landon was also confused as well, because even though he saw these men approaching earlier on, the look that they gave their masters made him feel like they weren't coming for him. And so he decided to see what their intentions were. The whole thing looked like a movie to him. Eh, so this was the famous traitor scene in the movies? Eli and Connor looked at Landon hatefully. No wonder Landon had arrived here today as well. So it turns out that these traitors had found a way to sneak out information to him ages ago. Even Eli, who had hidden this information well, was surprised that Zarius had known of his plans ahead of time and had even informed Landon about them too. It really looked like he had been raising a wolf all this while. Connor also thought in the same manner as well. And when both princes looked at Landon, they wanted to see what made him so special that their people would be bought over by him in such a short period of time. Little brother, it seemed that we have truly underestimated you once more. 
to think that you would be able to make our men turn against us in such a short time. Little brother, you are truly great. Landon looked at his angry brothers and couldn't help but smile helplessly. Elder brothers, I'm innocent all right. Humph, little brother, do you take us for fools? Do you really want us to believe that you came here purely on coincidence? How naive do you think that we are? In addition to that, if you're innocent, then who's the real culprit? I am, said a deep voice from behind the duo. They tilted their heads and looked at the culprit in shock and confusion. How? How could it be him? They stared at the person moving towards them amidst the battle in shock. As for the culprit, he was none other than William. Excuse me. Coming through? Ah, because with your sword friend, it looks really sharp. William was currently holding peanuts in his hands while waiting and avoiding the men who were fighting along his path. Of course, he was also surrounded by some Baymardian soldiers as well. Sigh. Little cousins, I was so bored in that vehicle. So I decided to see you all instead. H.M., these peanuts are so good. Eh, do any of you want any? The glares that both Connor and Eli gave William was enough to send anyone to an early grave. Peanuts? They were talking about betrayal here, and this bastard dared to talk about peanuts? Dude, learn how to read a room, all right? Connor placed his right hand on his chest as if trying to control his heart rate. How hateful. He looked at the traitor before him and couldn't help but wonder if the guy had something loose in his head. Or else, how could the bastard prefer this sort of idiot as a leader? Landon looked at William and smiled wryly. Why was this dude so shameless? Of course, Landon himself didn't know that he was in fact the king of shamelessness. William chewed his peanuts without a care in the world and calmly walked towards Zarius and Nicodemus. Sorry to have watched you suffer earlier on, young master. They said respectfully. William saved his hands as if telling them that it was a small matter. Eh, why are you all still hung up on that? Aren't I fine now? Eli and Connor looked at the traitors before finally gazing at William once more. Tell us one thing. If these people are your men, then why didn't they inform you about tonight's attack? Eli asked curiously. H.M.? Well, I guess they didn't know as well, right? William said while facing his men too. Answering to the young master, this one had tried to get out information about why we were preparing for war. But this one had made a terrible mistake and thought that His Highness Eli would be taking the men to the capital instead. Since word came in that Alec Barn was away. With the way His Highness Eli Barn spoke about killing Alec and seizing the throne, this one thought that the men were preparing to form the capital and seize the throne while Alec was away. That was why this one sent you a message detailing the plans to seize the capital instead. Zarius said apologetically, Young master, this one had no idea that we were marching towards the base. This one knows that His Highness Connor had secretly made this base here, so as to watch His Highness Eli and find an opportunity to take him down. Recently, His Highness Connor had gotten the help of an expert, so he doesn't share his plans out with us anymore. Hence this one had assumed that we were marching out the deal with Eli Barn instead. Young master, I sincerely apologize for my mistake. Please punish me later on as you dim fit, Nicodemus said. Hearing their explanations, Eli and Connor were taken aback. They were angry, confused, and curious as well. Looking at their faces, it was clear that they had a thousand and one questions to ask. So William decided to summarize all he knew for them. Cousins, in a nutshell, when you all were still twelve years old, my family sent these men to your sides. Of course at that time, they were first your attendants and bodyguards, since none of you were fifteen yet. So within this time, they built their credentials by gaining your trust. Of course, we also gave them fake wives who were spies as well. Bottom line, whenever they left to travel back to their village for vacations, they were typically coming over to our base instead. Cousins, they are what the Bay Mardians would refer to as undercover agents. So they have always been on our sides. And that was probably the reason why it was so hard for you to catch me and my family. And to be honest, even if little cousin here didn't come and save me, after I'm captured, men in your camps would have also freed me later on too. So, I wasn't worried from the onset. Well, that at all I have to say for now. So let's round all this up, shall we? 
I'm really hungry, William said while holding and holding his belly. He was actually really hungry. After battling for so long, please, his belly had begun rumbling. Connor and Eli, on the other hand, felt like beating the bastard to death. And so, with everything said and done, it didn't even take up to 30 minutes before the battle to finally be over. Eli, Connor, and the rest of their captains and aides were locked up, and the rest of their men were either dead, heavily injured, or surrounded by the Baymardian soldiers instead. Of course, the next thing that Landon did was to clear the entrance to the main building, as well as clear up the entrance to the secret tunnel too. It took over four hours for them to do this, and after that, William, Landon, and some of the soldiers went out to look for William's people. After exiting the underground tunnel that led to the forest, William led the men to another underground shelter camp. For sure, they had dealt with some ferocious beasts on their way to the shelter. And funny enough, they had also been attacked by William's men too, who had initially mistaken them for Eli's men instead. When everyone heard that the crisis was finally over, they hugged each other merrily and made their way back into their base again. Mona and Odin, who didn't even know that their son had stayed back, quickly thanked Landon when they heard the tale of how the battle went. They smacked William's head and made him swear never to do that again. Hurry up and thank your cousin, you unfilial son. Many who had witnessed the scene were so shocked that they didn't even know how to react. This was their fierce leader, who knew that he would be like a little kid before his parents and uncles. Of course, those who were William's teachers growing up only chuckled as they were quite used to seeing such scenes. Even if one grew up, they would never stop being their parents' child. Landon couldn't help but look around awkwardly as he watched William interact with his parents. He was glad to know that he wasn't the only one who was treated like this too, because Mother Kim and Lucius were quite a handful as well. And so, that day, the captured prisoners were sent to the dungeons, and the medics quickly treated all injured men be it from the enemy side or not. Of course, several people gathered the dead bodies all around and piled them up into two, does and comrades. Everyone knew that keeping their enemies' ashes of dead bodies on the base would be bad luck, so why would they want to do that? They cleared the place and also started fixing the broken entrances within the main building as well. So with everything properly taken care of, it was time for Landon to finally get down to business. With the battle finally over, Landon and the rest decided to stay for three more days, just to ensure that everyone had gotten medical aid already. The next day, William's men, family, and maids all got to work. Today, they would have a celebratory banquet in order to thank their saviors. And while all this was going on, of course Mona, Odin, William, Landon, and Mona's brothers, Morel and Powan, quickly got together in William's office. Good child, it seems like you do remember me. Mona said while rubbing Landon's hair teasingly. She couldn't help but recall Landon's previous appearance when he was in the capital. The boy was weak, naive, and only had one thought in mind, and that was to take care of his mother and Lucy. But now, the weak-looking boy had finally grown up into a dashing young man who now ruled over his own empire. Mona felt a little bit of a heartache for him, because in her mind, the poor boy became who he was today due to the harsh reality of the world. He somehow reminded her of herself. When she was still in the capital back in her youth, she too was naive and ignorant. But now, she had learned how to survive and also built a fast network within every part of Arcadina. Of course, she did this with the help of Odin, but still, the risks that they took at that time were enough to make anyone quiver in fear. And after building their network for the next 15 years, they finally handed everything to William to take care of. One could say that she had learned all sorts of things, be it the art of disguising oneself, or even how to successfully run businesses as well. She had done it all. And now looking at Landon, she knew that he too had faced such situations for him to get to the top. In a way, she was glad that he didn't suffer from poisoning all those years back. Or else, wouldn't her precious son be a goner by now? Landon, on the other hand, didn't recall Mother Mona's face at all. And that was because the woman had disguised herself previously when she had sneaked into the palace. But when Mother Mona told him that she was the maid that used to sneak around and get him food, he immediately remembered her then. In short, he was utterly shocked at how far back these people had hatched their plans. Good boy. 
We can't thank you enough for saving our little William, Mona said gratefully, and as she spoke, Odin, Morel, and Powell nodded as well too. They had complete respect for the man before them, because he had won such a hard battle even though he and his men were completely outnumbered by the enemy. In addition to that, they had also received several Baymardian goods over the years, so looking at the inventor before them, how could they not respect the man? He was smart, loyal, strong, and hardworking. Just by looking at his political means and rules within his empire, one would instantly know that he was the sort of person thy out his people's needs, comfort, and safety first. Little Landon, how's your family? Animona, they're pretty good, but since you'll be coming with me, you'll see them, won't you? Landon said playfully. Mona and the rest were shocked. Since when did they agree to go anywhere with this brat? Mom, cousin Landon, and I sorted it all out yesterday. We will all go to Baymard with him and remain there until the time for battle. William said lazily. Battle? As your uncle? How come I don't know that we are preparing for battle? Yeah, how come we don't know a thing? Just what are you two brats up to? Son, what exactly is going on? Are we still going for war? Immediately, everyone curiously threw several questions at William and Landon. Odin looked at the pair silently and rubbed his chin thoughtfully. When is the battle? Pretty soon, uncle. And what are the chances? A crushing victory. Good. You are undoubtedly a barn. Your plans are indeed grand. Thank you, uncle. Seeing Landon and Odin converse as if they were in their own world. Everyone except for William was still confused about the exact plan. What the hell were these two talking about? Brat. What are your plans? Odin asked seriously. To put William on the throne before the end of the year. Why? Because it has always been a dream of mine to unity the Pino continent, and later on, the world. I wish to rule alongside capable rulers, so that in this way, poverty would be long extinguished and other world issues would be solved as well. I do not wish to rule the entire world, since that would be too boring and a tin of work to do. So, all I want is an equal partnership with all leaders of the world. And that's why William and I have decided to sign a treaty. With that, Landon quickly took out the treaty and began to go over it with them. Mona and the rest quickly immersed themselves in it and couldn't help but nod in appreciation. Everything on it was beneficial for them. They even got to properly understand the functions of the UN as well. It seemed like this brat was hellbent on giving this world peace. Of course, some of the clauses stated that they would be removed after every empire had stabilized itself in future. More specifically, it stated that only after the entire world was unified would Baymart open its doors and allow others to learn and develop their technology from what they made. In addition to that, the reasons for doing so were also started below too. And in truth, they all thought that it was understandable. After all, who could guarantee that some greedy noble wouldn't use these products to commit even more crimes? The world needed specific rules that were seen as inhumane all across the globe, be it rape, child trafficking, or anything else. The entire world needed to know that such crimes would only be punished and never encouraged. Everyone looked at the treaty and was utterly impressed. It looked like their little William wouldn't suffer any loss from signing this. And on top of that, they were also pleased by Landon's character as well. Brat. Where do we sign our names? Quickly, give me a pin. Ding. Congratulations to the host for getting one step further in completing your mission. Now, hurry up and place him on the throne. The moment everyone had signed their names, the system's flat voice rang out in his ears. But of course, he chose to ignore it. Oomph. Was the system blind? Couldn't it see that he had a grand plan in mind? He would definitely take Alec down and place William on the throne no matter what. But all of this had to be done strategically. Soon, he would help William and make his move. And so, Landon and William signed the treaty. With Mona and the rest being his witness, as well as two other Baymardian soldiers too. Since they would all be coming with him to Baymard, he would then photocopy the treaty and give them their own copy there. As for who would stay back in the base and look over everything else, William had planned to let one of his aides run things while he was away, and he had also written several letters to those who managed his other bases as well. With Landon's help, he knew that he would soon be king.
so wasn't it good for him to start making some arrangements now? As for the enemy soldiers, they would continue to stay in the base's dungeon, with the exception of Eli, Connor, their aides, and their captains. All these people will be transferred to Baymard's prison. Essentially, Landon had decided to place these brothers of his with most of their loyal followers too. This way, they wouldn't be easily bullied by others in prison. Who knows, maybe they would end up being the bullies, rather than getting bullied. But no matter what, Landon didn't want to see them go to prison with a disadvantage. So he chose their most faithful companions to join them there as well. For him, this was the last bit of kindness towards these blood brothers of his. As for what he would do with his stepmothers, Landon didn't feel like hurting them at all. He knew that they would try to get their sons out of prison. But what could he do? He couldn't kick an injured dog no matter how he looked at it. One should know that if Alec was taken down, these women would lose their titles and probably get sent out of the palace as well. They had never directly harmed Mona or her family, so it was easy to predict that they would be spared and sent out as well. And when they find out that their sons are imprisoned in Baymard, wouldn't they want to do everything in their power to rescue them? On top of that, since they would be driven out of the palace, wouldn't that mean that their men would also be confiscated as well? And if William seized all of Eli and Connor's men, then wouldn't these women have almost nowhere to turn to for their elaborate rescue plan? In short, their only option would be to hire an assassin. But even at that, Landon wasn't too worried, because breaking into Baymard was no easy feat. Talk less of breaking into the prison. All he could do was pray that these women calmed down over the years. As for how long he would keep, he had decided to keep his brothers here. It would be a maximum of 15 years. It could be less if they were well-behaved and changed. Time flew by quickly, and before they knew it, Landon and his crew had already stayed over for three days now. They handcuffed the prisoners, placed them in a separate vehicle, and also placed Mona and the rest in one of the guest vehicles too. This was the first time that Mona and the rest were in it, so they were utterly stunned by the level of comfort in the vehicles. Brat, you said that this thing is called a sleeping pod? It's so spacious. Uncle Morel asked excitedly. He then got into it, and even laid down on it the bed as well. Sigh. If he traveled like this, then wouldn't he be reluctant to reach his final destination? Morel, you old dog, that's not what is important. Look, the legendary light bulb is here. Powan said excitedly while playing in his pod as well. He flipped the switch several times and couldn't help but actress the switch a little. How fascinating. As for Odin, he was more interested in the selection of books that were on one corner of his pod. There were thick-paged books there as well as several thin books, pamphlets, that talk about Baymard there too. Mona, on the other hand, was seated at the dining section area that had tables and chairs there instead. She was more fascinated with the overall design of the place instead. It looked like this one was designed strictly for guests. Looking at everything now, they couldn't help big wonder what Baymard would truly look like. As for Willem, he slowly pulled down water from the water bottle in his pod before quietly placing his sleeping mask over his face and covering his body with his blanket. And before he knew it, he was already in Sleepville. Even he didn't know how tired he had been these last few days. Now, with everyone settled, all buses departed as planned. They were off. But of course, Landon and the rest weren't the only ones who were happy as well. Ha 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 ha. A burst of rich laughter bellowed across the entire hallway instantly making all those who heard it shocked. They looked at the person who was laughing and couldn't help but think twice just to be sure. This was the first time that they had ever seen their master laugh so happily. Normally, his laughter was always sarcastic and downright creepy. So what could have brought out the changes in him? Soon, a beautiful woman gracefully walked into the room with a charming smile on her face. Elder brother, what's making you all bitterly this morning? The man looked at her and quickly issued for the servants and guards around him to leave. Elder brother, what is it? The woman asked curiously. Little sister, I just got word from some of the nobles out of the empire. And from the time that they wrote this letter to the time that I'm receiving it, it's most likely that they will be in Bonnie Coastal City by the time that my men article there. Little sister, in total. They're bringing in an additional 11,800 men to join on in our campaign. Of course, they would be bringing their own ships as well. 
Elder brother, this is good. With more men, this battle has undoubtedly been won. Yes, with more men, wouldn't we be able to crush Baymard when we battle on water? He, little sister, we are now one step closer to our goal. The man said confidently. Yes, elder brother Nopline. With Baymard down, we will be able to cement ourselves properly and take over the entire Pino continent using Baymard's technology. Elder brother, those Baymardians don't stand a chance. We will definitely be victorious. Landon and the rest steadily made their way towards Baymard in a very chilled manner. They were utterly shocked by the fact that they had traveled a four and a half month journey in a matter of days. Even William couldn't help but marvel as well. Previously, he had speculated that it would take a full month to get here. But who would have known that the results would even be more shocking than they already were? No wonder people called these carriages heaven defying. With how much distance they had covered in this short period, how could he not be amazed when he had been informed that they had already passed Riverdale City? Heck, even the prisoners were shocked as well. Connor, Eli, and their aides and captains felt like it was almost too good to be true. No wonder Landon could travel all the way there in such a short time. And here they thought that Landon had followed them out of Baymard when last they came. After finally arriving, Landon settled the matters concerning the prisoners before taking his guests to the palace. Your Majesty, welcome back. Welcome back, Your Majesty. Stepping into the palace, everyone who saw Landon bowed in respect and greeted him merrily. Their king was finally back. Of course, Mona and her family also observed how much these people truly adored the brat before them. Secretary Brian, please send word for King Father Lucius to see me urgently. As you wish, Your Majesty, Brian replied. And within the next 25 minutes, Lucius had arrived. Brat, you wanted to see me? Lucius entered Landon's office full of vigor. He had no idea who Landon had gone to save, but since he was back, then didn't that mean that their mission had been a successful one? Lucius calmly greeted those within the office and sat down close to Landon. Mona and the rest had already disguised themselves, so Lucius truly couldn't make them out. Landon immediately showed them to the bathroom under Lucius' confused stare, and when they came out, Lucius was so shocked that he fell to his knees before Odin. Plup, young master, you're alive, Lucius said with watery eyes. Lucius felt like a series of explosions had gone off in his mind. He felt like an invisible weight had been lifted from his shoulders when he saw Odin. Only the heavens know how devastated he had been when he returned from war only to hear that his young master was dead. He wanted to run, shout and scream to before world that his young master was alive and well. He felt giddy with excitement, as his brain tingled with joy. Ha 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 ha. He was both laughing and crying at the same time. His young master was alive. This was Arkadina's real king. And not that fake, Alec Barn. Young master. It's good that you're alive, Lucius said merrily. Lucius, I'm no longer a young master, all right? So just call me Odin. My lord, how can that be? You will always be a young master in this one's eyes. So how can I dare to call you by your name? Odin helplessly sighed, as he looked at Lucius who was shaking his head like a chicken and denying his requests. How could an old man like him be called young master? Wasn't that just too embarrassing? What would his men say if they heard it? But at the same time, he couldn't blame Lucius as well. After all, the man was just truly happy that he was alive. In his youth, Lucius had been under him, and had even taken over battles under his name whenever his father requested for troops to fight wars. Lucius was one of his most loyal commanders, and was also a good friend to him as well. Lucius, you are now Baymard's father king, and no longer my subordinate. So please get up and do not kneel before me again. Yes, young master, Lucius said before finally rising and looking at Odin in admiration and confusion. Young master, why didn't you inform me all these years that you were alive? Did you not want me as your subordinate anymore? Of course not. Lucius, I had planned to tell you after I fully stabilized myself. You see, it took me three years to properly heal up, and by the time I had planned on informing you, I realized that it would be meaningless for me to do so. Young master, what do you mean? 
Lucius asked in confusion. Lucius, at that time, I realized that you were already deep in love. So if I took you away from your woman all these years, wouldn't I be cruel to do so? Lucius smiled awkwardly at Odin because at that time, he wouldn't have left Mother Kim's side, even if the ancestors themselves descended from the heavens and commanded it. Mona and the rest watched the duo converse with each other as if they were all alone in their own little world. Am. Mona coughed lightly and brought them back to reality. Lucius focused on her was immediately recognized her as well. Can't she mean a Ferris? His young master's fiancé? Young mistress? Welcome back as well. Lucius, you're still the same as ever. But how can you shamelessly call me young mistress? Look here, Lucius. We are husband and wife, and we have a son. Mona said awkwardly. Lucius' eyes lit up when he saw William. Indeed, he was the exact copy of Odin when he was younger. Welcome to younger master. Uncle, there's no need for all of this. Since Landon is my cousin and sworn brother, then shouldn't we drop all the formalities? Yes, you're right, younger master. Landon, William and the rest talked a bit more, before finally getting them face masks, since they had already washed away their disguises. And so with everything out of the way, Landon allowed William to handle their lodging here. Since this William had already been here previously, it was somewhat easy for him to aid his family in navigating through Baymart. Of course, Lucius wanted to settle everything for them, but since Abandon had already decided that they would stay here undercover, it wouldn't be wise for Lucius to do so. So they stayed within District H, which was meant for visitors, guests, and non Baymartians. From there, they went about trying to familiarize themselves might with Baymart. Even William was shocked by the new products that had hit the market again, and as expected, they were so marveled by what they saw, especially photos. They also booked dates to go to the zoo, museum, ski resort, and so on. In short, they had all concluded that Baynard was indeed a place of magic. But of course, while they were enjoying themselves, Landon, on the other hand, rushed towards the lower region like crazy. Your Majesty, they're ready. All scheduled movies and TV series have finally been completed. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep you updated for future uploads.